Hello friends and welcome back. This is Louisiana Cooking and Living if you're new to my channel. And my name is Katie and I am super excited about this new, I guess, little series I'm going to do on Mexican food. Um, Tex-Mex, some try to do some authentic Mexican food. Mexican food is my all-time favorite. I'll eat anything from the Tex-Mex to the real Mexican food. It's just, I love it. I could eat it, I would say... At least once a week probably could do every day because there's so many different things you can eat so tonight we're just going to start something simple we are just having tacos tonight and chalupas or i guess you could call it tostadas one either way i guess depending on where you're at that word is interchangeable um, but i like to make my own taco shells and um, i know the ones in the store are convenient this makes it quick and easy but when you have time to fry your own taco shells is just the best thing super crispy and just yummy well uh, i guess we can get started i've got some onion chopped here and we're going to move to the stove and get our meat cooking on the stove and um, we'll just get started so here i have my um, ground meat this is the one i told you about before is um it's 85 15 it's organic meat i get from costco and this is what i like to get it's five dollars a pound there and they have them it's it's twenty dollars and it's um four pounds but there's three of these packages and they're one and a third pounds each so that's a, how much meat i'm going to make tonight is one and a third pounds and i do the shortcut i am using tonight is my taco seasoning i have made my own taco seasoning in the past and i'm sure i'm going to come up with a recipe again and make some more but I have found a really good taco seasoning packet that I like to use that uses clean ingredients and um, so we're going to be using that tonight and um, as you I'm sure know a packet of taco seasoning is for one pound so we're going to use about a packet and a half-ish for this pack of meat so we're going to get this cooking in the skillet so this is the taco seasoning brand I like to use, and it comes in mild and spicy. And so what I do is I'll use the full packet of the mild, and then the spicy. So this one's already open. What I do is I'll use the half a packet of this to make up the difference. So it's not, the spicy is pretty good spicy. So the ingredients on here is chili powder, sea salt, ground dates, tomato powder, garlic powder, nutritional yeast, jalapeno powder, cumin, onion flakes, cassava flour, cream of tartar, and parsley. So I really like this brand. They are um, clean ingredients, non-GMO, um, and I really like this. So this is what I like to use. So we're just our meat all chopped up here. While that's cooking, I like to add some salt to this. And I like to get it browned. And when I say browned, I mean like not just kind of cooked. I like to get like brown crispy on it. Gives it a more um, of a, a flavor that's, um, I forgot what it's called. Oh. The Maillard reaction, that was something I learned from Becky on Acre Homestead. I knew that the brown, when it gets really brown and crispy, it does taste a little different, has a depth of flavor. I didn't really know that that was the name of it. I think she had learned that from America's Test Kitchen, that that's what it's actually called. Um, if you haven't watched Becky on Acre Homestead, I really enjoy watching her shows, her channel on YouTube. Um, so we'll let this get browned and we'll chop it up some more once it gets... Um, a little bit more crispy and we'll get the our refried beans started so here I have some bacon grease I just keep it in the fridge whenever I make some bacon and I add this to my skillet 
I like to get everything done and ready to go before I actually fry my taco shells because I can keep the meat on warm but I like for the shells to be fresh. So I'm just going to add this bacon grease. It's about, I don't know, a half a tablespoon of bacon grease in my skillet. And I'm going to add some onion here. I'm going to say a quarter of a cup of onion. I don't put my onions in while I'm um, trying to brown my ground meat because I don't want the, the water content to cook out of the onion and make it just kind of sweat. I do want it to, to brown like I said. So for my refried beans, just want to saute these onions really good. But bacon gives a nice smoky flavor. I am using canned pinto beans today. Starting to get some of that browning that I was talking about, like that. All right, now that we have the browning going, I'm going to add my onions to this. And we'll save the rest of it to top our tacos with. Let this cook for a minute and looks like our onions over here are looking good. So we are going to add our um, can of pinto beans, juice and all, because it's going to kind of evaporate. We'll add some salt to the beans. Alright, we're going to add our taco seasoning. So, like I said, about a packet and a half, a packet and a third. Because it doesn't have all those chemicals for anti-clumping, you can see that it does clump up a little bit in the packaging. And then we're going to add the water. Like the saba flour in there thickens it to make like a sauce. Let this simmer for a few minutes. I 
have my burner turned down to low now and we'll just let this go while we get everything else ready. This meal comes together really quickly, especially if you're just using store-bought taco shells. But even frying the taco shells, it doesn't take really that long. So I have my potato masher that I'm going to use to make my refried beans. I'm going to turn my skillet down on low. And you just go around and mash your beans up. And I like to add a little bit of cheese to my refried beans. So I'll add a little bit of cheese. The cheese will kind of thicken it up. And as we are making our taco shells, it will continue to evaporate because we'll leave the burner on low. We give this a little taste real quick to make sure we have enough salt. They are hot. I think they could use a little bit more salt. All right, we're going to move this to the back burner and then we're going to get our pot ready with our oil to fry our shells. Okay, so here we are frying our chalupa or tostada shells. I just take store bought corn tortillas and I just fry them. You can do a super shallow fry if you're doing just the tostadas. Um, you know, like a cast iron skillet or something. You don't need this much grease, but um, because I am doing the taco shells, I needed a deeper amount of oil. I am using lard here to fry these in. I've never fried these in lard, but I had some lard from when I did the French fries from that previous, if you watched the video previous to this one. I canned potatoes and I made French fries with them. Um, so I just reused that lard I already had instead of getting something else. Um, out. So the fry the tostadas. I just keep flipping them. I don't want them to get burned. I want them to get crispy and the middles tend to take longer to cook so that's why I keep flipping them and I kind of push them down just to kind of make sure they're in contact with the grease. So these are about ready and then we'll make some taco shells also. hot holding my tongs over this hot grease. When these come out I do salt them while they're still a little damp from the oil. I put them on a sheet pan over here with some paper towels and a drying rack. All right for the taco shells I end up using two sets of tongs. I put them in there kind of push it down. I kind of want both sides to start kind of cooking before I start forming it. And what I do is I end up, so I just fold it over and kind of, well I guess I don't need two pair of tongs right now. Um, sometimes it'll puff up in the middle and you kind of need to push it so it doesn't kind of stop it from puffing up. So I just hold it down and then I flip it over and hold it the other way. That's how easy it is to fry your own taco shells. These you kind of have to do one at a time because you kind of have to stay on top of it. All right, and then I'll dry them upside down on my rack. All right, we'll do the next one. the edge of the pot. It gets so hot. All right. 
night. That's how I make my taco shells and my tostadas. And I'll finish frying these up and then we will make our plate together. All right, everything's ready. We are going to make our plate. This is our little tostada, our chalupa, and our crispy taco shells. So what we'll do for our chalupa, we'll just take our refried beans here. They thickened up, so I had a little bit of water to them. I think I added too much water, but they will taste just fine. I'm going to add some shredded lettuce. I like to use iceberg lettuce when I'm having my Tex-Mex kind of food. And then... Um, some chopped onion, and then some cheese. And then for my taco, just have our taco meat here. Add some lettuce. I love the the hot meat with the cool crisp lettuce. I love that combination. Again, some onion and cheese. Something my kids like to do is, well, let me put my plate down and then I'll move the camera and actually talk to you. So there's my plate. Do is take a flour tortilla and spread the refried beans on that and then wrap it on the outside of the taco make a double decker taco like a two with taco bell. Anyway, and something else, um, another tip is if I want to make chicken tacos, I will take um, boneless chicken breast, boneless skinless, put those in a pot with the taco seasoning and a little bit of water and put a lid over it and let that simmer for about an hour until it shreds up and you have shredded chicken taco meat. That simple. All right, so um, if you want to add sour cream to this, I have out my salsa I made the other day. We'll have that with some chips on the side. So we can get a bite so you can hear how crispy these tacos are. Because they are good. Here we go. I'm so sorry. I'm not sure what happened to my microphone. But I just was going to wrap up about this meal. Um, you could always add sour cream, tomatoes, avocados. I like to make guacamole by smashing up some avocados and just adding my salsa to it. And so you could have a side of guacamole also. Um, this meal, it took 45 minutes, maybe an hour to make. So something maybe you could do like on a Saturday night where you have a little bit more time for cooking dinner and you're not as rushed as maybe a weeknight would be. And I just hope y'all try this. This is um, a good uh, change to your normal maybe taco dinner that you would make. Make it a little bit more special. I just hope you hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. And share this video with others you think would enjoy it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.